Hello, my name's Alex P. Twig, and I'm going to show you how to retopologize a model within 3D Studio Max. Um, if I show you the model we're working with, it's this uh, sort of missing link gorilla model. You can tell that this model has been done in ZBrush, and then the Decimation Master has uh, reduced the polygons to a, a, a level manageable within uh, 3D Studio Max. Um, you can see there's no polygon flow there at all, um, and this is not a model that you would be able to animate. So coming out of edge face mode, um, just a couple of things before we get into the retopology. I have two materials that I've set up here. I've got one which is just a standard material with a, a reasonable amount of specular value onto it. Um, this is so that I can uh, see the, the contours very clearly and all the lumps and bumps on my model. Um, uh, without having to mess around too much. The second one is a just standard material with no specular value, um, but it is set to wire mode, and that means it gives me a wireframe view on just a single object um, without having to worry about seeing the grid and all the mesh of this uh, really messy uh, gorilla model. Okay, so one thing to note is that these models um, in here, these are editable polys, so we can come in and operate these tools. I'm going to go into the freeform tab. I'm going to select a new object. So that was, if you missed that, that was, uh, there's a little arrow button here. Just click that and select new object. That means that we're now operating on a, an entirely new object. You want to make sure this is set, You'll by default it's set to grid, to on surface, and you want to pick the, uh, the model you want to retopologize. The offset dictates how far away from the model you're going to be creating your retopologized mesh. I'm going to set this to point 0.1, and then we're going to go into step build mode. This is how you're going to lay down your first polygon. Okay, to do this, I'm going to hold down sh uh, the. Well, sorry, I'm going to left click. It doesn't look like you've done anything to begin with, but when you put a second point down, you can see that it highlights that you've got these two vertices that you've created. I'll create a third, and then a fourth. Okay, so I've got four vertices down there. I'm going to press Z just to uh, focus on these. You can see how far they're set off the uh, the surface of the model there. That's with the offset. But we need to create a polygon from this. Hovering over the tool, you'll see that the way you create a polygon, there's a couple of ways. You can, uh, but the way we're going to use is shift drag, um, shift left click drag over the space between these vertices. So shift left click and drag creates the vault, the, uh, the, ver the polygon between the vertices. I just think that this uh, offset's a little large, so I'm going to halve that to 0 0.05. And to get these to lock in place, I'm going to move the vertices around. To move a vertice in this mode, you press Control, Shift, Alt, and then left click, drag. And if I do it to all these points, you can move it to wherever you want on the model, but I just want to just tie in a little movement. You can see that they're now closer to the model. Okay, so now let's get the uh, this shader on there. So we've got the wireframe mode. It means I can still see the model underneath. I'm going to just drag those up there. Okay, so still in the step build mode, I can uh, put down another couple of vertices. Um, and if I another way you can create a uh, a polygon is if you hold down Shift and Alt, just no mouse button, just drag your mouse cursor over the vertices, then left click, it will create a, another polygon. Okay, so if I create the vertices here, shift alt, drag your mouse over, then left click to create the polygon. Now let's go to another mode. We're going to go into the mode which is the extend mode. I find this is the mode that you're going to spend the majority of your time in when you're doing your retopology. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a polygon here. Now instead of laying down a vertice, then shift, alt and dragging, I'm just going to grab this corner vertice and drag it out and we've got another polygon. Very, very quick. Okay. Another method of the, uh, in the extend uh, tab is you can hold down shift and drag out an edge and that will drag out a polygon. So you've got shift dragging on an edge to create a polygon or just left dragging on a vertice to create a polygon. Now you'll usually want to have a corner like this to operate from, because um, if you don't, what's going to happen? Say I were to drag from this point, it's going to create uh, a polygon that you, you've got a bit less control of, um, and that is might not be the shape you want. Um, 
So usually when you're creating or extending loops, you're going to be uh, shift dragging out, control shift alt to uh, just massage those points, and then uh, left click dragging out a, a vertice there. Okay, so there we go. Just trying to look at where this, uh, this model might need its uh, edge loops. Um, you can see I'm just dragging out mostly with the, the, the shift to bring out a single edge there and uh, then I'll uh, bring out more detail just from the corner there to complete the loop. Okay, so that's uh, one method of using uh, the extend tool. Another one, oops, see, <laughs> is uh, you can bring out an entire edge loop by pressing Control Shift and left click dragging out there. So that's brought out the entire loop. You're not going to be doing that a great deal because you have less control over where the vertices go and then you've got to go in and sort of re-massage all the points to make sure they're in the right place. Um, but it, it, it can be useful at times. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to remove a polygon that you don't want. In the extend mode, you can just control click and it removes the polygon. It's more noticeable that when you're doing it on a corner one like this because if I control click, you can see the polygon and the vertices associated with that polygon have vanished. If I were to do this in the step build mode, you can see that it's left these vertices behind. So that's a key difference between the two modes there. It, um, one of them will leave the vertices behind, the other one will uh, delete the vertices. Usually I will operate in extend mode and I will want to remove those uh, rogue vertices as I'm deleting. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly, this isn't going to be uh, necessarily that pretty a, a modeling job here, um, but I'm just going to shift and left click, drag out some, uh, a loop around this eye. Because one of the problems I always had when I was doing sort of more traditional modeling um, uh, workflow, in programs such as 3D Studio Max or Lightwave um, was that eyelids were always quite uh, a pain in the neck to, to get them so that they sat nicely on top of an eyelid, on top of the eye rather. Um, but this method is, uh, is very, very quick and um, very, very effective at creating a very neat um, eyelid. So uh, yeah, I'm going to share that with you after I've just completed this loop around the eyelid. So this is, uh, again, it's just shift, left click, dragging out. To close a loop, you're going to be using one of the methods for creating a polygon that you saw um, first off. So just massage these points into place. Go into step build mode, shift alt, select them all and left click. Or alternatively, you can just shift and left click drag. So there we've got our, our loop around our eyelid. Now let's see how to form the actual eyelid itself. Now the trick that I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, instead of using the, uh, the face as the, uh, the guidance for the retopology, I'm going to switch and use the eyeball itself. So now the polygons that I drag out, the vertices will be sticking to the surface of the eye. So if I start on extend mode and start at the top here, Have a little uh, look at that. Yep, that's not a bad uh, thickness for the eyelid. Okay, and then I'm going to drag out these corners to uh, get some further eyelid going on. I'm not going to do the entire loop because, uh, frankly, it's just repetition and you don't need to see that. Okay, so you can see I've got the top of the eyelid now. Let's reduce the offset to zero. And then in extend mode, I'm going to drag out this edge and then drag out these corners. And now with zero offset, it's, uh, it's created an edge around this eyelid that is going to be very, very, very closely matched to the surface of the eye. If I come out of extend mode and I'll turn off point mode as well. I'm going to turn off the wireframe option so we can see the actual shading on the surface. And you can see you've created that really nice close ridge around that eye. It's very, very neat. It's very, very tidy. Um, so it's a 
really good way to work um, and it saves you a lot of time and a lot of fine tuning. So that's basically um, the gist of how you're going to operate when you're working within um, Retopology. There's one last little uh, trick that I like to use, or a couple of little tricks that I like to use. Um, you'll have uh, you'll have moments where you're um, you're looking at your topology and you're thinking oh, this isn't quite right. So here, where I've created this loop and it's not quite meeting up with the uh, the rest of the topology, you're going to need to figure out a way to get those to work. You can <laughs> bear with me a moment. I've still got this reading uh, the I instead of the uh, the there we go, the face model. Just turn that wireframe back on again. Okay, so here we go. So that's uh, instead of um, trying to extend this or meet these polygons up so you've got a triangle, you can just left click, drag out there, and then you very quickly you're very quickly you're resuming that loop. You might want this loop instead of to continue across there to flow up here, so in extend mode, uh, I'm going to drag that out. And let's see. Just bear with me a moment. Not that one. Bear with me while I just try and figure out. There we go. I think I was right first time, it's just the shape of the polygons were confusing me. There we go. So now you can just continue this loop around um, the surface of the ISO. There we go. I'll just increase my uh, offset again so I'm not sitting right on top of the model. There we go. And then very easily step build, just uh, bring those together. Now, what I might want to do is you can see that this polygon, uh, they're very, very long. And I don't really want to have a polygon of this sort of uh, shape um, in, my, in my model. I want something a bit tidier. But I, I do want this row to stay here. So I need to add a, a row of vertices in here. Really, really quick, just to go in, back into the graphite modeling tools, um, and select the swift loop tool. And you can just drop a row of vertices in there and you can do this in any place in your mesh go back into uh, the freeform mode go back into step build mode and then I can just continue on straight away what you might want to bear in mind is that the swift build the swift loop mode won't stick your vertices to the surface of the model so you might need to just go back in there and uh, just massage those points ever so slightly so they're back on the surface of the model okay so that is the base of how you go about retopologizing um, one of these models. And if I just show you uh, the finished version that I've, uh, that I've developed, you can see that this now very, very closely resembles that, uh, that product I had from ZBrush. But looking at the uh, edged faces, you can see it's got much, much tidier um, edge flow and it's got a much lower polygon count. Now this is quite a high polygon model because I'm going to be doing quite a lot of facial expression with it, but you can see it is much, much more easily worked with now. I hope this has been useful for you. That's been Retopology and uh, my name is uh, Alex P. Twig. Thank you very much.